Your reaction, Buck, to this just torrent of good news so far for Trump? It looks like a great night for America and a bad night for communism. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled. Uh, this is what the Democrats uh, richly deserve. Uh, and I would say that I I'm usually one for good sportsmanship and, uh, you know, consideration for a battle well fought. Uh, when they spend the last few days of a campaign saying openly that Trump and his supporters are, are Nazis, uh, I feel no grace. I feel no uh, sense of... Uh, sadness at the sadness that they are feeling or empathy at the sadness that they are feeling. Uh, they ran a candidate who's an utter fraud. Uh, she's also a disgraceful person for her attempted character assassination of Brett Kavanaugh during his confirmation hearings. I could go on mm -hmm. at length just about that. Uh, she's an abomination of a candidate. She tried to lie to the American people. She tried to hide from the American people. And it looks like, and maybe tomorrow I'll have to eat my words, but whatever, I won't care. Uh, it looks like the American people saw through it and have done the right thing. And I haven't even gotten to what a great campaign I think Trump did run. Um, the most iconic political moment of any of our lifetimes, a president taking a bullet grazing uh, the side of his head and not just continuing on with his campaign, continuing with public uh, uh, public appearances afterwards, but yelling fight, fight, fight in the moment to his crowd. None of us have ever seen anything like that and none of us I think ever will again. And uh, this was just a very clear choice between the return to uh, four years of Trump policies and leadership, or I'm not even sure what we could say Kamala Harris would have done uh, or would, would do if she were to win. I think it's a very remote possibility now. Uh, she ran away from everything that she had ever stood for in adult life. She did so in about a 90-day period when it suited her. And she did so after pretending that her chief partner and the commander in chief didn't have dementia, which she clearly knew. So, uh, you know, they haven't started the tears over at MSNBC, Megan, uh, when I'm not checking in on your live stream. I've got a, a few different TVs here running and I'll see what's going on there. But when they start crying, I will start laughing because uh, they deserve it. Uh, the media went hysterical against Trump. Everything that they said about him. Uh, in these final weeks uh, as their primary methods of attack was, I think, just completely insane, unhinged and beyond the pale. And here we are. Uh, also, by the way, all these Republican senators so <laughs> have have had different uh, mm -hmm. have had them all on at different points. Um, you know, Bernie Marino is a great guy. I'm not sure. I think Hovde is. I saw something like he was separated by six votes at one point. I mean, it's like the closest Senate race anybody's seen since uh Al Franken, uh, you know, some years ago in Minnesota. So it's it's looking really good for Republicans in the Senate. And I'm just I'm very um, happy. It feels like this is balance restored. It feels like this is the, a reckoning on so many levels. So let's just hope mm -hmm. that I don't wake up tomorrow and find out that the magic ballots arrived in Detroit all at once. I know. I know we all have to be cautious because we've been burned before. Mm -hmm. Want to uh, share this? Brett Baer reporting that he spoke to three separate sources close to the Harris, close to Harris and the campaign. One said, "Quote: I think we're losing this." End quote. Other two admit path is very thin. Trump has more votes in counties in Pennsylvania where he should be losing by a bigger margin. I mean, that's exactly that's exactly it. That's exactly how the decision desk will look at the outstanding vote to see, is he ahead by margins um, that could give him the padding he needs to win? Or is he is there still enough outstanding vote that could go her way to swing the state? And it doesn't sound like they feel confident about it. Let me ask you something on your analysis, Buck. Do you think there's anything she could have done differently that would have changed the results we're seeing? Um, no, I actually don't. Um, I think that I was one of the people who all along was was insistent uh, and I was wrong and unfortunately had to buy my good friend and co-host Clay, the most expensive steak, I think, in the continental United I States. I saw that. Uh, it had firecrackers in it. <laughs> firecrackers, a gold case, the whole thing. So Clay, Clay got his <laughs> fancy steak. I thought that they would still run Biden, quite honestly, and it wasn't because I wasn't fully aware of the cognitive decline, as I think all of your guests, you, I mean, everyone, we're all aware of, of what's happened to Joe Biden in recent years. It was bad and continue to get worse as, as age related decline does. But Kamala is a horrible candidate. I mean, truly Democrats recognize this in 2020. She didn't become a different person because the circumstances of the election suddenly uh, indicated that it would be more advantageous for them if they didn't have Joe Biden as the nominee. 
Um, so Kamala Harris was rejected resoundingly by the Democrats uh, in their own primary in 2020, right? It's one thing for Republicans to really dislike a candidate. I mean, I know so many people who will say, you know, I, I, I hated Barack Obama. I thought he was terrible. Yeah, but he was really effective at winning the presidency, right? I mean, you know, it was a once mm -hmm. in a generation. That's the one thing he was really and, good at. Right. I mean, exactly. Getting elected as a Democrat. He was really good at that, at, at running campaigns and as getting elected. Kamala is uh, is is quite obviously bad at this. And people would say, well, she was a senator. Uh, and, you know, she was a senator before. Yeah, but she's a machine politician who's never actually faced any real scrutiny. And more than that, she's really a machine politician who represents the DEI wing of the Democrat Party. And so she didn't mm -hmm. have to be tested you know, even as a Democrat. You know this reminds me of? Uh, Roger Ailes used to say a lot of people were correspondents at Fox News and they wanted to be anchors and not everybody sh should be an anchor. It's not, the, it's not the right job for everybody. Some people are better field reporters. And he used to say, he just wants to fail upwards. That is the perfect example mm -hmm. of failing upwards. And that's her. That's her. She, she, she failed upward. I, I mean, she's, she might be the number one. She might be the winner of failing upward, which is kind of a success. So, I mean, there, she's number one at that. <laughs> um, right. But I mean, she, though, you look back at her history, she transferred into Howard. She got into law school, it appears, through a DEI program. She didn't do particularly well. She failed the bar exam first time around. She got a job in the DA's office. She began an affair with a man 40 years her senior who was incredibly powerful in California politics. He helped get her elected as DA and boom, Bob's your uncle. She was off to the political races in California, a bright blue state. And then we all know how she got selected as vice president. Yes, of course, because Biden made that explicit in his very Biden way where he says the things out loud that most <laughs> Democrats know to sort of keep quiet. <laughs> uh, look, Ka Kamala Harris also was a big believer in the Jussie Smollett hoax. I mean, that, that this is the reason that we have instructions on opening packages that tell people like, you know, don't put this plastic over your head is because they have a very, very low cognitive ability. And uh, when you see somebody believing that Jussie Smollett was attacked by MAGA people on the south side of Chicago, <laughs> I think it's fair to say that you're not dealing with the brightest bulb. I, I think it's quite obvious that Kamala Harris <laughs> was never up for this at all. And on top of that, I don't think, you know, there are some Democrats who I would disagree with and maybe don't think are particularly gifted or bright, um, but I think are, are fundamentally trying to be decent people. Uh, Kamala Harris is absolutely vicious and ruthless. Uh, and the Kavanaugh hearings, which I remember very well, followed very closely and thought was one of the most grotesque things I've ever seen the Democrats do. Of course, that was mm -hmm. before some of the stuff that I've seen them do to Trump. Um, and, and I think that she never, there was never the accountability for her role in what unraveled as a as a clear hoax uh, to destroy a man, a good man in front of his family, his colleagues and the whole nation. Yep. So I think That's Kamala right. is is a uh, is a person of of no leadership, no character and no intelligence. And that Democrats put and, and I don't say that about all Democrats. I've never said Hillary Clinton is dumb character, not her strong suit, but I've never, you know, she's they're, not dumb. They're, they're, no. Yeah, she's not dumb. Um, I, you know, I call it Barack Obama's not dumb. I mean, I really try to call it like I see it. And and Joe Biden, actually pretty dumb, but very much good at the glad handing, the grinning and the nonsense of 50 years in politics running in a state where he's never had a real challenge other than just doing whatever the Democrat Party tells him to. So Biden kind of knows, you know, he knows his brief, we would say, like he, he knows how to play the game. Um, not a smart guy, but not an ineffective guy as a politician. Kamala Harris was absolutely never up for this. Let's be honest. The world is not getting any simpler. Whether it's a natural disaster, a supply chain issue, or just a nasty virus, things happen that we simply cannot control. But what we can control is how prepared we are. We have seen time and time again that preparation is key. It's about being proactive, not reactive. That is where the Jace case comes in. The Jace case is an emergency kit with prescription antibiotics that cover a huge range of common infections. This is just a good idea to have around. The Jace case takes the guesswork and the panic out of challenging situations. You will have the right medication when you need it. And in times of uncertainty, you really don't want to be dependent on outside systems. With the Jace case, you have a practical, reliable solution right at your fingertips. It's about taking control in a world that sometimes feels out of control. So don't wait until it's too late. Get prepared now. Just go to jace.com, that's J-A-S-E, and enter MK at checkout. Promo code MK at jace.com to get the right meds the moment you need them. And this is about smart preparation. 
Don't forget that for you and for your family's peace of mind. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.